From the nation's capital, Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. A weekly discussion about the federal issues most important to Nevada. And now, from Washington, D.C., here's Merrily Joyce. Good day to you. I'm Marilee Joyce, and this is Eye on Washington, the only statewide Nevada news program produced in Washington, D.C. Every week, Eye on Washington takes you straight to Capitol Hill for a discussion with Nevada's delegation and other leaders about the federal matters that matter to you. Today's topic, it's the Hill's Voice Promoting Western and Rural Interests. It is the Congressional Western Caucus, and we'll learn from one member about how he uses his place there to advocate for Nevadans. And he is my guest today, of course, Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Ahmed. Day, and thanks for being here on this fun topic. Thanks, Marilee, for inviting me. Thank you. Well, for almost 20 years, the Western Caucus has been working to advance issues important to residents of Western states, and many of them are top Nevada issues I've discussed here on this show. And today on Ion Washington, we'll find out the mission of the Western Caucus. We'll learn why my guest says he's a great fit for it, and we'll find out how he uses his membership there as a platform from which to advocate for many of your priorities. The Western Caucus website says its mission is to enhance, sustain, and preserve the West dynamic and unique culture and to find innovative solutions to address the distinctive concerns facing western and rural community. The mission page lists four key principles the caucus seeks to advance, protecting private property, strengthening local control, promoting economic growth, and increasing e uh, energy independence. And later in the show, we're going to zero in on a couple of these that are front and center in Nevada news right now. For now, just a bit of information about the caucus itself and the best trivia I found during research. Former Nevada U.S. Congresswoman Barbara Vukanovich was among four House members who founded it in 1993. The main reason for its creation was to explore ways for states to manage some or all of the federal lands within their borders, a big deal for Nevada since the federal government controls about 87 percent of the state's public lands. Today, the caucus remains a leading advocate for public land users in many important Western industries, such as energy development, mining, ranching, farming, and recreation. So, Congressman and uh, Congressman Vukanovich got Nevadans a big seat on the caucus on day one, and 20 years later you're advocating for those same issues, aren't you? Yep, yep. It's, it's amazing. I didn't realize that, uh, that Barbara was part of the, uh, one of the founders, but that, uh, yeah, great. that is completely understandable when you know how strong her record was. Yeah, I want to uh, zero in on a couple of the, the big uh, caucus advocacy issues. Uh, I, I know you care about um, economic development and energy. We're going to get to those later in the show. Okay. For now, I, I help our audience understand just a couple of things. First, what do uh, the states that are most represented on the uh, Western Caucus, what do they have in common? Well, a lot of them have in common large amounts of federal ownership in, in, in their states as far as, as real property goes. So when you talk about anything to do with economic development, you need the landlord or the owner involved. And in Nevada's case, as you mentioned, it's, you know, 85, 87 uh, percent. Some of our neighboring states aren't quite that high, but they're still way up there. Sure. So that's a big deal when you're talking about land use and economic development because they're pretty well tied together. You know, this show, uh, we're on eight stations statewide, uh, TV and radio. I, why do uh, the Nevada audience members, why, why do they care about uh, not only the Western Caucus, but you having a seat on it? Well, they, they care about it because whether you're in Elko talking about travel management plans in the, uh, in the National Forest, or whether you're in uh, uh, Eureka County talking about uh, BLM's activities permitting um, minerals interests, uh, whether, you're t whether you're in Humboldt County talking about the Burning Man, uh, uh, event that, that is permitted through the BLM Winnemucca office. Almost everything we do in the Silver State has some strain of federal land use in it, and, and so it affects our everyday lives all day, every day. And why did you get involved in the caucus yourself? Well, because I think it, it brings that platform, which is, and, and I'm not a regional guy, but those issues are pretty specific regionally, and making the folks in the other states understand what it's like when they talk about, well, our public lands, and it's like, with all due respect, um, when you, for instance, do something in Massachusetts, uh, very seldom do you have to go through the land use processes and procedures that apply in the West because most of the land is private in, in, in many of those states. So it's important. You know, um, uh, folks on the show, you know, you know um, uh, mostly focus on the larger population centers of Las Vegas and Reno. You've made clear since you came that you also want to be a voice for Nevada's many rural citizens. You, you mentioned some of those topics a moment ago. 
Uh, tell us why the, 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 our rural citizens in Nevada should care so much about the Western Caucus. Well, be, because it's about, uh, Mary Lee, it's really about economic sustainability in terms of most folks, you know, there's a large, it's not news to anybody listening to your show, large independent streak in the Silver State. And those people want to be the major drivers of their future and their decisions that affect the quality of life, the quality of their communities, the quality of, of the open areas around their communities. And so, if that's your major uh, uh, focus, then you need to have good, strong representation in terms of making those federal land managers, if you will, as responsive as possible to the local planning jurisdictions at the state and local level in Nevada and elsewhere in the West. How does the Western uh, Caucus work? I, I know you, you, you meet among your caucus members. We, we've talked many times on this show about the importance of uh, that caucuses provide uh, being educational vehicles to other members of caucus who maybe don't share those same issues as you. When you talk to, say, a, a member from Connecticut, a, a member from Massachusetts, as you said, that doesn't have much uh, federal control over the, over the lands, for instance, or some of the other local and, and state issues that the caucus might address, what do you say to them? How, how do you get them on board with some of the, uh, the legislation you might be pushing that helps the western states? Well, it goes issue by issue, but, but the biggest battle we face with, with uh, non-federal ownership states is, is this idea that somehow planning is best done exclusively by an executive branch agency, most of the folks who are in the decision chain are elected by nobody. And so it's mm. like, listen, if you believe in elective representation, whether it's your, whether it's your local county commission, your city council, or, or, or the governor's folks uh, in terms of state lands, uh, Division of Environmental Protection, all that stuff, they are all very responsive to that. Mm. And so the challenge for anybody, and I'm not being mean to any particular administration federally, but the challenge for anybody is to make those land managers and those decision makers as much invested in the local folks so it is a joint project. They don't have to go through that in the other states. Well, a, a, one of the big issues, uh, one of the key principles we mentioned of the Western Caucus is that strengthening of local control, which we're not going to get to in our next segment, but when we come back, we are going to talk about one of his favorite segments, which is a key principle of the Western Caucus, and that is uh, promoting economic development, and that's right after this. You're watching Eye on Washington with Merrily Joyce. Brought to you by the National Mining Association, Caesars Entertainment, The Freest Companies, NV Energy, The Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority, The Nevada Mining Association, Western Lithium Corporation, and Skyline Restaurant and Casino. America's minerals have made us a nation of self-reliant dreamers, shaping our world and the endless ways we enjoy it. But red tape often forces us to import more than half the minerals we depend on. Minerals we already have. We don't import our dreams. Shouldn't that go for our minerals too? The National Mining Association. Learn more at nma.org. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Heads we go, tails we stay. A coin flip, that's how it all began for what is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Charlie Frias, with a can-do spirit and support of his loving wife, Phyllis, bought ABC Union Cab in 1966. They then parlayed five cabs into a fleet of nearly 1,000. And today, Frias has over 2,000 employees and was recently voted Las Vegas' best company to work for. Frias, safe, reliable, simply the best. Hey, it's embarrassing to be tackled by someone smaller than me. I look weak and effeminate, so now I'm overcompensating. I'd also be very ashamed by that. I'm not waiting until it happens to me to make you feel small. My dad taught me to be the alpha male, so now I'm gonna knock a tray out of your hands at lunch. Kids bully for all kinds of reasons. None of them are good. Know your kids' friends and monitor their social networking. Find more tips at flipthescriptnow.org. 
And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of the Congressional Western Caucus and how my guest is using his membership on it to help Nevadans. We've been visiting with him, Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade. Well, let's focus a little bit more closely now on two issues that are among the four advocacy issues in the Congressional Western Caucus mission statement. Here are the four principles I mentioned earlier, protecting private property, strengthening local control, promoting economic growth, and increasing energy independence. We're going to focus on those latter two, starting in this segment with economic growth. Nevada is one of the Western states struggling mightily in this economic downturn, and Western Caucus members believe that large federal land holdings, coupled with what they see as restrictive mandates, stifle economic growth, hinder job creation, drive up the cost of living, and impair education funding. Why? Because, they say, of diminished tax receipts coming from public lands. And, Congressman, in 1960, a multiple use, uh, the Multiple Use Act was passed, and it said that national forests are to be used, quote, for outdoor recreation, range, timber, watershed, and fish and wildlife purposes. Uh, the Western uh, Caucus site calls it, quote, key element of responsible public lands management, and that a uh, multiple use philosophy is the encouragement of environmentally responsible use of lands for uh, economic growth. What's changed? And what you do you what? I don't. I don't think, uh, as far as, as that statement, I don't think a thing has changed. That's right. that's the challenge. And I've said before, I, I fervently believe that it is possible to use natural resources in an environmentally responsible manner. Um, but the word there merely is use, not nothing. Now, there are instances where, where maybe nothing is appropriate, but, you know, in, in most of those, there can be no better example in Nevada than our history of the Southern Nevada Public Management Lands Act. Sure. You know, that, that is an example of transferring lands to private ownership to facilitate a phenomenal growth cycle in the state's largest metropolitan area. Um, so, you know, and I think it's a success story. And the Lands Act, it began with uh, Senator Richard Bryan and then Congressman John Ensign, who yeah. uh, came together on that uh, Senate and, and House uh, bill that was bipartisan and, and worked out together. And well, in most people praise that as a. Uh, and, and following that, Marilyn, we're getting, ready to, we're getting ready to drop legislation uh, tomorrow that does kind of the same thing on a different scale, smaller scale which is for Nevada Copper to transfer uh, around 10,000 acres of BLM land to the city of Yarrington to facilitate an environmentally responsible uh, a mining project that will be huge and for again, Western your, Nevada. And again, your uh, statement, when, when you say uh, the, the 1960 Multiple Use Act, your concern now is it's uh, not really being, uh, lands are not being used for the economic growth purposes that you say they should be used. Is that correct? You know, wh whether you're an ATV person, whether you're a hunter, whether you're a, a, a bird watcher, uh, whatever it is, uh, you're into the minerals industry, energy industry, all those things wrap into having Nevada have the ability to, to basically chart its own economic future in an environmentally responsible fashion, and Nevada ought to have that ability. Well, speaking of that, the, the, I have a, a quote from the, the, the caucus issue page. It says, quote, throughout our history, non-park federal lands have been available for a variety of activities from recreation and grazing to mining, energy development, and forestry, and that's basically yep. what you've said. Yep, I, and I think it's, you know, everything evolves. Uh, Technology evolves on both sides of the issue in terms of, of ways to conduct agricultural operations or minerals extraction operations or any of those things to where it's like, listen, uh, we've got, I'll, I'll tell you what our number one environmental issue in Nevada is right now, Western Caucus and many states are dealing with it, it is, is the sage grouse stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what the problem was in Nevada? The mm -hmm. number one cause of that in Nevada was wildfires. It wasn't mines. It wasn't cows. Uh, it, it wasn't uh, ATV folks. It was wildfires. Amazing. Uh, you know, the, the caucus members uh, say there's been a string of regulations making it hard for sectors to use, um, make economic use of public land. So I would say you agree with that. Yeah, you know, the challenge is always uh, w when regulations are used to, to stop things as opposed to get a legitimate evaluation and go forward based on, on sound science and what the facts are. But, but it, as you know, there's been a ton of, of litigation and, and lengthening of the processes and stuff like that, that that basically makes people think, you know what, it's too hard, let's not even try. You know, you were head of the Nevada Mining Association a, a few years ago, and, and one of the, the caucus's concern um, is efforts to reduce or prohibit mining 
I, I want your thoughts on that, both as a congressman and as a the former head of the uh, MA. Well, you know what? The, the, uh, the minerals industry in Nevada's environmental record in modern times speaks for itself. A lot of times when somebody's beaten up on them, it's for historical stuff that, by the way, represented what the technology was at the time. Uh, you look at the projects of the major folks and the minor folks and it's like they are leaving more on the table when they get done with an area now in terms of rehab mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, than they came in many instances are cleaning up legacy operations that were before them and also uh, successes in wildlife, uh, range management, sure. uh, all those sorts of things. Uh, have, have upped the ante in, in a very positive way, is my experience. We're about out of time for this segment, but I want to—I do want to say, since you brought it up earlier, this is your example or one of your examples of balancing business concerns and environmental concerns. Is I've, that correct? I don't think you have to trash either one to go forward in an economically sustainable manner. Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk about energy, another big goal of the Western Caucus and of my guests. It's right after this. Every day, thousands of people in northern Nevada don't get enough to eat. One out of five children in northern Nevada go to bed hungry every night. But you can do something about it. Catholic Community Services of Northern Nevada has been providing help and creating hope in our community for more than 65 years. By donating food, time, or money, you can make a difference in a hungry person's life. When you make your generous donation to St. Vincent's Dining Room and St. Vincent's Food Pantry, you're helping to fight the scourge of hunger in northern Nevada. In these tough economic times, now more than ever, we need to help those less fortunate. To find out how you can donate to St. Vincent's Dining Room and St. Vincent's Food Pantry, call, click, or stop by. And together, we can end hunger in northern Nevada. to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. You already watch Eye on Washington with Marilee Joyce, Nevada's only statewide program produced in Washington, D.C. But for even more news from Capitol Hill that affects you, your family, and your business, you need to read Nevada's Washington Watch, our online newsletter. In-depth reporting on federal efforts that impact you. Our exclusive Inside the Beltway column, putting a microscope on Nevada's congressional delegation. Guest editorials about what Nevada needs from the Hill. Nevada's Washington Watch, your watch on Washington. Subscribe today at nevadaswashingtonwatch.com. Heads we go, tails we stay. A coin flip, that's how it all began for what is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Charlie Frias, with a can-do spirit and support of his loving wife Phyllis, bought ABC Union Cab in 1966. They then parlayed five cabs into a fleet of nearly 1,000. And today, Frias has over 2,000 employees and was recently voted Las Vegas' best company to work for. Frias, safe, reliable, simply the best. technology make our lives better. Will geothermal, wind, and solar energy be a bigger part of our future? Yes. And soon it will all be in our backyard. Learn more at nvenergy.com. And welcome back to Eye on Washington, our discussion of the House Western Caucus and how many of its issues mirror the top federal issues facing you in Nevada. My guest today is talking about it because he's a member of it. He is Nevada U.S. Congressman Mark Amade. Well, let's focus this segment on another, another of the four key principles guiding the Western Caucus, and that's increasing energy independence. On its side, it says, quote, the Western Caucus believes America needs to increase its uh, energy independence through environmentally responsible development of our huge untapped domestic energy resources. Its five energy proposals include both, quote, responsible energy development in ANWR and, quote, promoting renewable energy. 
people on my site, or on his site, my guest cites the need to unleash American energy, and he ties it right into jobs, adding, quote, the energy sector is crucial to our economic growth and high energy costs have a major impact on job creation. Meanwhile, he states his support of alternative energy sources, especially highlighting solar and geothermal, saying of the latter, geothermal in particular brings jobs and growth to Nevada with 20 plants in operation providing clean, reliable electrical capacity to the grid and significant additional capacity under development. Congressman, first, uh, regarding part of the caucus site titled Responsible Domestic Energy Development, it says, we do our nation a disservice when we continue to rely on foreign sources of oil. What, in your uh, your opinion, is the answer here? Well, we have the resources within the borders of this country, Marilee. It's a combination of things, obviously. Uh, there, there are phenomenal coal resources. There are phenomenal natural gas resources. Obviously, Nevada is one of the leaders in a, in a building success story in geothermal. Solar is, is, is in the grid there, too, if you will, no pun intended. Uh, one of the ones that's not mentioned in there is biomass also. Mm-hmm. So we've got the ability to control our own future, uh, but, but we need to go forward in an aggressive, responsible fashion and, and do just that. And you've said we, we, we need to focus both on uh, untapped domestic resources and the promotion of uh, renewable energy. You're not taking a side here. You say that both are, are I think very they, important. I think they all have a place in the equation. Uh, and, and the question is not to try to create winners and losers, but focus on those strengths and get them working and, and get down the road. There are plenty of opportunities for Nevada and the West in that scenario. But the caucus does call efforts on the Hill to reduce domestic energy production from all sources, uh, quote, short-sighted and not in the long term of the public. Well, and, and, and you know what, that's kind of generous. I'll, I'll tell you this, uh, <laughs> the, the, the technology, for instance, for coal, Nevada is not a coal state as far as, as production, but in terms of consumption, uh, you know, w- we struggle sometimes to compete uh, for economic development, what, what a kilowatt hour costs in Nevada. Across the border of the Beehive State in Utah, they've got one of the lowest. You know why, Marilee? Yeah. Because they've got over 90% reliance on coal. And guess what? They're doing it environmentally responsibly, and it, and it helps out. So there's an example of, listen, uh, do things for policy reasons, not political reasons, and, and the energy stuff is, 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 is achievable. And, and again, you, you tie energy production directly to jobs. Uh, I have a quote from you on your site. You said, I believe we need to take action on the bipartisan Keystone Energy Project, which would immediately create 20,000 jobs with the potential for 100,000 to 200,000 additional jobs. And you also mentioned it would re, uh, reduce oil and gas costs. Yep. Well, and I mean, that particular issue touches everything from foreign relations to energy to domestic uh, jobs. Uh, You know, I I mean, it almost checks every box in terms of the top 10 potential uh, issues that are on anybody's radar screen at one time. And obviously, I'm somebody who believes that it is an environmentally defensible and sound project, and we ought to and we ought to go forward. You know, I don't think anyone. Uh, uh, I can't think of anyone out there who thinks things are positive on the on the hill right now. Um, uh, as we close out our Western Caucus discussion, what's your view on on a way to bring both sides together on two big Nevada issues: public lands management and energy? Well, we're going to continue to focus on the facts, tell the truth, be sincere about all of those things, and then you know, if, if we think somebody's playing politics instead of the facts, we'll mention that, but in a respectful way and try to basically just keep chipping away on these are the facts, this is why it's good policy, this is why you ought to support whatever the issue is. Great discussion. On Thanks for sharing all this information about the caucus. And when we come back, we're going to have our mailbag segment. That's right after this. All of us at Caesars Entertainment have something we want to say. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We don't want you to gamble if you've had too much to drink. You shouldn't gamble if you're lonely or depressed. And if you're under 21, you're not allowed to play. No, no, no. No matter which of our casinos you come to, our message is always the same. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. Play responsibly. We know you're coming to our casinos to have a good time. And we always want you to leave feeling like you did. America's minerals have made us a nation of self-reliant dreamers, shaping our world and the endless ways we enjoy it. But red tape often forces us to import more than half the minerals we depend on. Minerals we already have. We don't import our dreams. Shouldn't that go for our minerals too? 
the National Mining Association. Learn more at nma.org. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Built on a fleet of just five cabs bought in 1966 by founder Charlie Frias, Frias Transportation is now Nevada's largest transportation provider. Today, Frias has a fleet of nearly 1,000 vehicles and more than 2,000 employees. As an industry and community leader, Frias continues to create the future of transportation technology and management and actively supports the community. Continuing the legacy of quality service in the Las Vegas Valley, simply the best. Thanks to an ongoing commitment by America's mining companies, more than two million acres already have been reclaimed. To learn more about reclamation or other aspects of mining, visit nma.org. The National Mining Association. And we are back with our closing segment of Eye on Washington. It is our mailbag segment. In this segment, we tell you about an issue that the congressional mailbag page of the Joyce Communication website has been getting a lot of correspondence about. We read one of your letters on the air, and then we invite our guests to respond to you right here. And Congressman, uh, coincidentally, we have a letter on public lands issues, and um, I have a letter from Lance R. of Urington. He writes, Dear Congressman Amade, you mentioned the need to strengthen local control over federal lands in Nevada. What are the next crucial steps to ensuring that local communities have a voice in those decisions? What do you say to Lance? Well, a, a, a few things. First of all, I think oversight in terms of those federal land managers by everybody in their respective districts is an all day, every th day sort of thing. Um, that, that doesn't mean that there's, uh, that there's people out there aggressively trying to fight against local control, but I do think that, that as the representative for CD2, you need to aggressively fight every day for local control in terms of those are the major shareholders, the planning and zoning jurisdictional folks. An example in Yarrington is, is the legislation we're introducing this week which transfers around 10,000 acres of BLM land that is adjacent to the city of Yarrington to the city of Yarrington for planning, zoning, and oversight purposes for uh, Nevada Copper, uh, a, a large minerals operation that, that's trying to get off the ground. So, how, how could someone like Lance get involved? He wants some local... Uh you know what? First of all, uh, Yarrington's in the Carson City BLM district. Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with the, with the Forest Service stuff that's going on out there because none of that's been on our radar screen, but the BLM stuff is. So it's, you need to make sure that you're in contact with your local BLM stuff and us too. Excellent. Let us know. Thank you for being here today. I'm sorry we're out of time. Talk, Thanks for having talk me. Talk for another half hour. Okay. Thanks for being here. And that is it for this week's Eye on Washington. Be sure to join us next time as we discuss more important federal matters and their impact on you in Nevada. Visit JoyceCommunications.com or join us on Facebook for more of the very latest from the Hill that impacts your life. And be sure to like us while you're there. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Marilee Joyce in Washington. Have a good day.